Accentrates Slow is the way to go by Scott Smith Many practices exist when it comes to ascending after a dive. Some people follow newer guidelines of 10 meters per minute and others are comfortable ascending at 18 to 20 meters a minute. Some divers follow the ascent set by the manufacturers of their dive computers, whereas others just make sure that they ascend more slowly than their own bubbles. So where does all this information come from? And what does constitute a safe ascent rate? Is there a magic number that divers can use to ascend at the end of their dives to minimize the risk of decompression illness? What are the downsides of ascending too fast or too slow? Almost all experts in diving medicine agree that divers should ascend slowly following dives, whether these are recreational, working or technical. But the reality is that there is very little direct evidence on what ascent rate is the safest. Most of the recommendations come from observational studies of bubble grades found by Doppler or ultrasound, or they are based on anecdotal and theoretical concerns. In the early days of diving, John Haldane and Leonard Hill experimented with a variety of linear ascent rates, some as slow as one meter per minute. But the rate itself was not sufficient to prevent decompression sickness when the exposures were sufficiently great. In other words, when the exposures were sufficiently great, there was no slowest way to go. Haldane realized there must be an optimal ascent rate that would reduce unnecessary exposure to depth and provide a sufficient decrease in pressure to allow off-gassing and yet be slow enough to protect divers from decompression sickness. This ascent rate is thought to vary depending on the depth, tissue saturation and breathing gas. For instance, in saturation diving, the decompression rate is in the order of several hours per meter, while in short, deep diving, it's in the order of minutes per meter, faster at depth and slower towards the surface. In recreational diving, where the depth and exposure are limited, a maximum ascent rate may be specified without regards to depth. The United States Navy frogmen generally wanted to ascend from their dives and exit the water quickly, but quick ascents were impractical for hard hat divers, and so they made a compromise of 60 feet or 18 meters a minute because of the convenience of 60 seconds per minute, so it was one foot per second. And that ascent rate, based on convenience, has been the basis of many dive tables to this day. It was not until about 20 years ago that the US Navy actually changed the recommended ascent rate to 10 meters a minute. In a 2009 study published in the Journal of Aviation, Space and Environmental Medicine, they looked at 47 recreational divers using ascent rates of 10 meters per minute and 18 meters per minute. At various intervals following the dives, the divers were checked with Doppler ultrasound devices and the group with the faster ascent rate seemed to have the higher bubble grades. This gives credence to the theory that slower ascent rates, at least in the range that are typical for recreational diving, reduce decompression stress on the body. What are the dangers of quick ascents? Well, decompression stress is defined as the amount of inert gas dissolved in tissues throughout the body, and then during ascent, bubbles may increase in size and be released by tissues into veins. These venous bubbles travel to the lungs, where they are off-gassed through normal breathing. Faster ascent rates are thought to have an impact on decompression stress by not allowing sufficient gas bubbles to be off-gassed through breathing. Decompression illness is one of the greatest concerns associated with fast ascents. When bubbles do arise, they become trapped or could become trapped in tissues or vessels and eventually cause a traumatic injury or blockage called decompression sickness. But it's also possible that air can enter the arterial circulation and result in arterial gas embolism, AGE, which causes a rapid onset stroke-like symptom. AGE may occur subsequent to lung damage, but it may also occur in the apparent absence of injury to the lung. On the other hand, sometimes rapid ascents produce no ill effects. So besides not allowing for sufficient off-gassing during decompression or running the risk of lung overexpansion, 
There are other implications regarding rapid ascents as well. Expanding gas in air spaces such as the middle ears and sinuses may cause local injuries, balance disturbances, reverse blocks or squeezes on the way down. These pressure injuries occur when gas expands or shrinks in response to pressure. Obviously with a rapid ascent, expansion can occur quickly and if there is congestion, it may produce a reverse block. So, how do divers keep it under control? What ascent rates should they observe without exceeding the limit on which they've decided? Well, one way is of course practicing buoyancy control skills. Buoyancy control devices and dry suits rely on gas or air supplies to enable the diver to maintain buoyancy at depth. But during ascent, the gas expands, causing the diver to ascend more and more rapidly if it's not vented. This can lead to an out of control ascent. In a similar way, an improperly maintained inflator or deflator mechanism on the buoyancy control device or dry suit can cause more air to enter the system than intended. It may even prevent the diver from venting it quickly enough and staying in control of their ascent rate. Proper weighting before the dive is also essential in helping to eventually control the ascent rate, since the diver will not need to add air into the BCD while at depth. Also keep in mind that equipment changes, such as switching from aluminium to steel tanks, affects proper weighting and buoyancy control during ascent. The simplest way of controlling speed is by venting excess gas from the buoyancy compensator device or dry suit during the ascent. Body position can help increase drag in the water and slow the ascent, and monitoring the computer will assist in making sure the rate is maintained. If the rate is faster than you prefer, many computers allow you to change it. Use of a bottom, slope, wall, ascent line and other visual or tactile references may also be helpful. Safety stops are also a great way to slow and pause the ascent in the shallow depths where the greatest changes in pressure occur. In conclusion, despite the lack of definitive consensus on which ascent rate divers should use, Slow is a good way to go. The United States Navy and National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, use a rate of 10 meters per minute. And recreational dive agency training recommendations range from 10 to 18 meters a minute. Regardless of the ascent rate you choose, it's most important that your ascents are controlled.